Okay, part four of lesson A, unit four, deals with what we call AC factoring. All right, this is usually the tough one. And notice our ICANN fact, uh, statement says we can factor trinomials when the A is not one. Okay, so that's a big deal there. All right, uh, let's take a look at our steps. Okay, keep in mind, we've said this already before. Okay. Step number one is always take out the GCF, or if there's a negative, we'll do that as well. We haven't really done negative factoring yet. We've kind of talked about it. We'll see it a little bit more in the next couple lessons. Okay. Number two, if you have a trinomial, you have to determine what type of trinomial you have. All right, and it's a simple process. All right, you have to look at the lead coefficient. We consider it an easy trinomial when A equals 1. That allows you to do the shortcut that you learned in the last lesson, last two over the last two lessons. Okay, when a is not one, you're going to have to go ahead and do every step of AC factoring. All right, there are no shortcuts to these problems. So, here is a list of steps for AC factoring. Step number one is we have to make sure we're in descending order. Nothing new there. Okay, we've been doing that since the start of this unit. We're going to multiply A and C together and write the product on the side in the MA chart. All right, we're going to find factors of A and C that equal B. Okay, we're going to break up the B term, all right, using the factors. Okay, then we're going to factor by grouping. Okay, I went through that a little bit quick because I'll be talking about it as we go. Oops, wrong one. Uh, also, you did see one of these problems done completely in the notes the other day. Okay, so AC factoring works like this. All right, first thing to notice, once again, is A is 6 in this problem. It's not 1. And because of that, I'm going to multiply A and C together and get a negative 30. My middle term is a negative 1. I'm still adding to get to negative 1. That doesn't change. Okay, so notice, and we get this by multiplying A and C together. We get this by taking b. So general form, this is ax squared plus bx plus c. All right. So we need to find factors of negative 30 to get me to negative 1. And hopefully we're getting good at this point with all the practice we've been getting. And we will see that we will use a positive 5 and a negative 6. Remember, don't assume you're right. Double check your work. 5 times negative 6 is negative 30. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. Okay, so we found our factors that we're going to use. Next step is to take those factors and break the middle piece into two. Positive 5x and negative 6x. Notice my lead coefficient and my lead term does not change. Neither does my final term. They just drop down in order. All right, notice once again that these are the same thing. So 5 minus 6 is negative 1. I'm just breaking it down so that I could use factor by grouping, something you saw in the previous video. So let's go ahead and do our grouping. Remember, when we factor by grouping, we're going to take the first two and pull out what's common, and then take the second two and pull out what's common. So in the first two, all I have is an x. When I divide everything by x in the first grouping, I'm left with 6x plus 5. In the second grouping, remember when the lead coefficient's negative, we take out a negative, and the only thing we have in common is negative 1. So I'm going to divide by negative 1. Negative divided by negative is positive, that's 6x. Same thing over here, positive 5. And notice what we have here is the piece in blue is the same, so we should be happy. We're going to take the red piece, x minus 1. That's one part of the answer. And then we're going to take the piece that made us happy as the other half. That is AC factory. All right. So let's go ahead and go back through that process again with a second problem. Okay, first thing we're going to do is look for a GCF. There is no GCF. There's nothing common between these three terms. I have a trinomial with a lead coefficient that is not 1. Here's my lead coefficient. That tells me once again that I should be doing AC factoring. I'm going to multiply the A and the C together. 
All right, I'm going to put this up here because I want to save some space for writing. All right, so that's positive 20, and I need to get to positive 9. All right, again, there's lots of factors of 20. You could use 10 and 2, for example, but 10 and 2, when you add them together, is 12. We need to get to 9. We're going to use 4 and 5, both positive. Please include your signs as you do this. All right, it's going to help you out. Okay, double check. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 plus 5 is positive 9. We're good. We're going to then split our middle term. Positive 4x and positive 5x. Okay. My lead term and my final term don't change. Now I'm going to factor by grouping. I'm going to group the first two together and then the last two. In the first two, I'm going to pull out what's common. The GCF of the first two is a 4x. So once again, what I'm going to do is divide by 4x. When I divide both pieces by 4x, I'm left with x plus 1, and then I move to the next one. And the next one, I can pull out a positive 5. And what I get on the inside is x plus 1. These need to be the same in order for me to be happy and know I'm right. So the part that makes me happy is one half of the answer. The part that's outside, the 4x plus 5, is the other half. All right. If you were to FOIL these two out, you would get to the original problem. Okay. Again, remember, factoring is the opposite of FOILing or distributing. All right, last one here. All right, we have a little bit of a problem here. All right, because, again, we have to check for a GCF first of all. All right, there's no GCF. Second thing we have to remember is you need to be in descending order. We're not. So I'm going to take a second and rewrite my problem. So I go 2, 1, 0. Now I'm in descending order. All right. This is A. This is B. This is C. When we're in descending order. So, again, I'm going to put my chart up top here out of the way. All right. 5 times 4, once again, is positive 20. This time I need to get to a negative 12. All right. If I look over at the previous example... All right, I used 5 and 4, and that got me to 9. All right, so I'm going to think right off the bat here, 10 and 2. All right, now again, check your signs. We have to get to a negative, so that means both of these need to be negative. A negative times a negative is a positive, and then a negative plus a negative is a negative 12. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is split my term. Then I'm going to bring down the stuff that hasn't changed yet. And then I'm going to factor by grouping. Okay, remember when I do this, I'm going to group the first two together and the last two. All right. I'm going to look for a GCF in the first one. I see my GCF as being X, so I'm going to divide by X, divide by X, and that will give me 5X minus 2. In the next one, once again, anytime my lead coefficient is negative, I'm going to take out a negative. And the best I could do is 2 here. So I'm dividing by negative 2 in each problem, or each part. And I end up with 5x minus 2. These are the same. That makes me happy. The part that makes me happy is half of my answer. The other half is the outside piece, x minus 2. Okay? So that's AC factoring. All right, you got three examples here. We did one the other day. All right, we'll do the U tries in class. And now we have a little bit of a factoring review on here for you to try. Okay, uh, just to make sure we're good. Now that we've pretty much learned everything except for the special uh, cases, which is the next lesson. All right, so looking at number one, our example A. Okay, always, always, always check for GCF first. So in this particular case, I have a 6x squared that I could take out. That means I'm going to divide by 6x squared, divide by 6x squared, and I end up with, on the inside, x squared minus 1. Okay? Uh, as of right now, that's all you know. We're going to learn how to do what we call difference of squares factoring. I'm going to introduce you to that right now. Difference of squares factoring is when you have subtraction 
and two perfect squares on each side. All right, the way we would factor this is by going x minus 1, x plus 1. I went really fast because there's a whole other lesson on this in the future. Okay, but just trying to introduce it to you. This is actually the complete factored form of this. All right, looking at B, this is an easy trinomial. There is nothing in common. There's no GCF. So I'm going to go right to factor. All right, I'm going to make my MA chart. I need to get negative 26 in multiplication and positive 11 in addition. So let's see, 26 is 13 and 2. My 13 is positive, my 2 is negative. This is an easy trinomial, so all I need to do is shortcut it by saying I know this is the answer. Take your factors and plug it in. Once again, this only works because there's a positive 1 here. All right now let's look at C. This is a hard trinomial where we're going to do AC factoring. All right, notice once again this is not a one here. So my AC factoring works like this: multiply my A and C together to get positive twelve. Still take my positive eight. All right, factors of twelve that give me the eight are six and two, both positive. I need to break my middle term. 2x, 6x. Don't forget they're both positive. Always a good idea to include those signs. My lead term and my final term have not been touched yet. I'm going to group two at a time. Those two and those two. I'm going to do GCF factoring. I'm going to take a 2x out of the front one. And when I do that, I end up with 6x plus 1. In my second term, we didn't see this earlier, all right, there's nothing common. So in this case, we have to choose positive 1. It's the only time you're going to factor out a positive 1 is when you're doing factor by grouping. And what happens here is when you divide by positive 1, nothing changes. These are the same. That makes us happy. So I have 6x plus 1 and 2x plus 1. Okay, that's a 1 right there. I'm probably going to erase a little bit too much. There we go. All right, uh, plus 1. Okay, so that's a quick little review of GCF factoring, easy trinomial factoring, and AC factor. Last question we have here today. All right, notice it says below is a problem with the student answer. By looking only at the piece inside the parentheses, explain how you know the student didn't factor correctly. So, we're being told to look specifically right here. How do we know they didn't factor correctly? Well, what I see is that these are both even numbers. So that means if they're both even, there's a 2 in common, okay, and that should have came out. So I would say, I know this is not correct because and again we're going to go back here and say alright they didn't factor enough out because both numbers inside are even and that means They could have taken out a factor of 2, okay? And I'm going to add as well. All right. So, again, just looking at the directions, it's important to read and follow directions. It says, once again, by looking only at the piece inside the parentheses. So only looking right here. We know this is wrong because, again, there's a 2 that could come out of both of these still. So they didn't get enough out. All right. You tries will get in class tomorrow. If you need to rewatch this, AC factoring can be difficult. All right. Rewatch it. 
all right and make sure please when you come into class that you actually try the you try problems don't sit there with a blank sheet of paper that is not trying that's wasting time we'll see you in class bye